Hey everybody, it's Coach Lance from OnlineHockeyTraining.com and welcome to Hockey 101, the art of dribbling. Dribbling is defined as a short movement of a ball or puck with the stick blade, six to eight inches going side to side or front to back. Dribbling is by far the most used stick handling skill in games and practices, so it's something you should be consistently working on improving. I think this process starts at a very young age where you gotta love the puck. The way you handle it, the way you treat it, if done with an artist mentality, it will reciprocate to you on the ice. You have to treat the puck as your friend as it's a relationship that will strengthen over the years if you spend enough time with each other and all his buddies. You see, off-ice stick handling and shooting training at home is something most players leave on the table and don't make part of their regular weekly routine. If you want to perform great things on the ice, you have to work on your performance off the ice. Let's begin by learning how to dribble. Dribbling, if executed properly, is 100% the top hand. I call it the engine. And every engine needs fuel to operate, and the fuel for our top hand engine is what's called the top hand wrist roll. What this does is to allow the top of the stick blade to cup over the top of the puck, keeping it flat when dribbling. The first correction that I look for that limits range of motion is where the top hand thumb is. You don't want to have it on the top of the shaft. You want the side of the thumb on the side of the shaft, better known as the V-grip. You want to exaggerate this top hand movement. One way I show players what I mean is to hold their stick in front of the body with the bottom hand palm open. Pretend that the top hand is revving up a motorcycle throttle. That's how exaggerated I want the movement to be. Everything I'm going to show you today is exactly how I teach and make corrections when working with players here at my training facility in Minnesota. I first fit players with this line grid. This one right here is eight to nine feet in length, and what it does is it separates the front of the body from the back of the body. Next, I'll have the player get into their power position, and I'll put two more lines down in the opposite direction outside of the feet. Before performing any drill, the player should make sure their feet are lined up with the toe and side of the shoes touching the line. Next, I'll have players work on outside the puck floor taps. What this does is it really isolates the top hand wrist roll, and if done properly and exaggerated, you'll feel a burn in your forearm after 10 to 15 seconds. If you're a younger player, you don't have the forearm strength yet, so what you do is you slide that top hand down a little bit, and then we'll do the taps. Here's what it looks like. Now see how my stick blade is positioned. See how the toe of the blade is up in the air? This is really important to understand, so get your thinking caps on. You see, anytime a ball or puck hits the stick blade, it sends a vibration up the shaft of the stick to your hands to tell you where it is on the blade. The vibration's weaker towards the toe, stronger towards the heel, and we have more control stick handling towards the heel of the blade. I'll put a green line down on the top of their stick blade from the middle to the heel of the blade. This is now the dribble zone. So let's test this theory. We now know that the vibration is weaker towards the toe and stronger towards the heel of the stick blade in the dribble zone. I want you to start dribbling in front of the body and then close your eyes. And I want you to feel when the puck is at the toe of the blade opposed to the heel of the blade. Can you feel the difference? Pretty cool, huh? Now I want you to dribble with your eyes open, looking down at the puck. After 15 seconds, where in the stick blade did you dribble the most in? Near the heel or near the toe? If it was near the toe of the blade, you probably have the second most common correction I make, which is called top hand hip lock. This is where the top hand is outside the body and on the hip. This is a very restrictive placement of the top hand, so we're gonna have to make a little adjustment. This is an easy fix. Get your feet lined up on the grid. Start with where you normally would have the top hand. Now push it out in front of the body where you now have a gap in between your top hand and the body. Now put a tape mark down on the ground in between the blue lines and at the center of your dribble zone. As long as your feet are lined up and the ball or puck travels over your tape mark, your hands will be in perfect position. By pushing your top hand out in front of the body, it automatically drops your top hand a bit and it brings the toe of the stick blade up in the air. All your stick blade is doing is popping a wheelie. Let's recap what we've learned so far. Before you start any drill, make sure you get your feet lined up on the grid. Check on your proper top hand position so the side of the thumb is on the side of the shaft. Top hand should be pushed out in front of the body so there's a gap in between your top hand and the body. Put your tape marking down so you have a visual road for the ball or puck to travel on. When dribbling, make sure that the toe of the stick blade is up 
and that the ball or puck is in the dribble zone and have an exaggerated top hand wrist roll. One technique I use to help break the top hand hip lock habit is chair dribbling. I'll have the player start dribbling with the hands outside the body so they can feel how awkward and uncomfortable it is. Then I'll have them bring the top hand in front of the body between the legs. Give it a try and tell me how much better this way feels. Now let's see what's going on with the bottom hand. If you're new here and you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and do coach a solid by sharing this video with someone in your hockey circle. I'd appreciate it. Before we get into the bottom hand, let's remember who the big dog, the top cheese, the engine is in dribbling. It's the top hand. So when I have players dribble, I'm focusing to see if there's any movement with that bottom hand like you see here. If that's the case, that means that the bottom hand is trying to do the top hand's job. What are you doing, bottom hand? All the movement of the stick blade is provided by the top hand and the top hand wrist roll. The bottom hand has a loose grip, very little movement, so the stick can easily spin side to side. If you have a player where the bottom hand is trying to do the top controlling hand's job, here's an easy solution. Get yourself a toilet paper roll. Let me show you how this operation works. Have the player take off the bottom hand glove and hold the toilet paper roll. The rule is, is you can't crush it. The stick has to easily spin in it. Now you'll start dribbling. What this does is it gives the player the sensation of letting the top hand do 100% of the work. It's a loose grip with the bottom hand and focus on that exaggerated top hand wrist roll. Now let's go over all the dribbling areas around the body. This is the in front position. Forehand in front. With this one, we want to push our top hand out away from the body. Forehand behind. Behind. Now we move over to the backhand side of the body. Don't be concerned about the top hand hip lock. That's the only way we can get our stick blade here. This is the backhand side in front position. What I'll also say is that make sure you're watching your toes. A lot of times when we get to the backhand side of the body, the toes will move this way. We want to have our toes facing forward and really focus on your shoulders turning. The last position is the backhand behind position. This one again, you really got to dip that far shoulder across. Keep them feet facing forward. We have to become proficient in all of these different areas around the body. Are you almost done? Nope. I got more, let's keep grinding. Stick handling is all about learning movement patterns. And what you're trying to do is to create a permanent motor program in your master computer, your brain, so the more you practice, whatever the skill is, the closer you get to the automatic phase. So what's an automatic phase you've already developed? How about walking? You don't say to yourself, right foot, left foot, you just walk. And the same automatic phase can be developed with stick handling and shooting, and with enough practice, your eyes will be up more, you'll gain more confidence, you'll have the puck on your stick more, and eventually everyone on your team will want to play on the same line with you. With that being said, you can also develop a wrong permanent motor program, and those are really difficult to correct. It's not like a computer where you can just delete it and it goes away. What you have to do is to create a new brain connection by doing the pattern correctly, practice it that way, and eventually the old program will still be there, but basically goes dormant. And that takes me to the next topic, vision training. When learning a new stick handling pattern for the first time, I want you looking down at the ball or puck so you're hitting your marks. For dribbling, the ends of your red tape are your markers, not blue line to blue line. You want to be a tight dribbler, not a sloppy one. Slower is better at the start when learning something new and technique is critical. So I force the issue with players and make them more aggressive by having them use a heavy steel ball. The added weight automatically slows them down, forces them to be more assertive, which increases control dramatically. I promise, vision training is coming. I only got a couple more things. From there, I'll move to rapid heel snaps using a weighted orange puck. The toe of the stick blade is up a bit, and the puck is in the dribble zone. You'll slide the puck and snap the heel down on the white line, and then to the blue line. Go back, and then repeat. The song you'll be singing in your head is snap, lift up, snap, lift up. Another technique I'll use is opposite hand dribbling. I'll first have the player do it regular hand for a bit, then we'll switch over to the opposite hand for a couple minutes. And then we go back to the regular hand for one more round. The common response I get from players all the time is, wow, that's so easy now. 
And finally, vision training. Here are my progressions. If learning something new, I want you looking down at the ball or puck, hitting your marks. Slower is better at the start while working on doing the pattern nice and smooth. Once you get that down, start increasing the speed while still looking down. If still hitting your marks, then put a couple objects out in front of you to look at, picking up the ball or puck peripherally out of the corner of your eyes. One way to help develop your vision training has to do with the color tape you use on your stick blade. I always recommend white tape for inexperienced players as it's easier to pick up out of the corner of your eye because of the color contrast. Well, I think that's enough information for one video. I hope you learned a few things and found the content useful. If you want to learn even more than just the art of dribbling, check out my off by stick handling and shooting program at onlinehockeytraining.com. Click on the Get Free Sample Training tab if this type of at-home training is something you want to add or enhance to your regular weekly routine. Thanks for stopping by and watching, and I'll see you next time.